Hello students and welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the second module on the Introduction to Quantitative Chemistry. Uh, those of you who are watching will notice that I have actually changed it to quantitative rather than qualitative, uh, which is what it appeared in the uh, first video. But nevertheless, uh, it is about quantitative chemistry and using numbers in our chemical reactions. So this particular video is going to focus in on the conservation of mass law. So this is hopefully something that's not going to be completely new to you. The law of conservation of mass is a very important one in chemical reactions. But there's a couple of things that we just need to, I guess, just review here and ensure that we have as we uh, start this process of calculations. So firstly, the law states that in any chemical reaction, atoms in the reactant are reorganized into atoms of the product, but no mass is created or lost. That is, mass is conserved in any chemical reaction. We can do this by checking that, first of all, um, new substances are produced. Uh, that is the definition of a chemical reaction. That no atoms are actually created. We don't have something that we didn't have before. And this is different to some of the reactions we've looked at that are uh, more of a nuclear change, where the um, release of a radioactive particle or the acceptance of a particular particle by a nucleus does actually change the nature of the atom. In chemical reactions, that doesn't happen. We have the same atoms at the beginning of the reaction in the reactants as we do at the end in the products, but they may be rearranged. So no atoms created gets a tick and no atoms destroyed gets a tick. So all we do is we rearrange the atoms. And this forms new elements and or compounds. So this is what we're looking for in a chemical reaction, a rearrangement of the atoms to form new elements or compounds. And the way we demonstrate this is through the use of equations. So it now becomes very important that we balance our equations. Chemical equations are useful for two main reasons. One, that they do help us address the conservation law, and two, they are a way of being able to represent complex processes much more simply. Now, I say simply, and you may be struggling a little bit with your chemical uh, equation writing, but practice will help you get there. The most important thing that we need to be aware of is instead of writing out all these long winded names for everything, we can use our symbol notation to do that. So hydrochloric acid becomes HCl and sodium hydroxide becomes NaOH. These little subscripts here we'll talk about a lot more as we go through this particular topic. AQ stands for aqueous, but we can also identify S for solids, L for liquids, and G for gases. And this just helps us keep track of what's happening in each of these uh, different chemical reactions because the different states are going to be important in different types of reactions. So hopefully you'd be aware that a neutralization reaction like this one will produce water and also a salt, in this case, sodium chloride. The water will be a liquid and the sodium chloride will remain in the solution because it's soluble, so it'll be aqueous. The law of conservation of mass tells us that if we had 25 mils of our solution of hydrochloric acid and 35, uh, 35, 25 grams of our uh, hydrochloric acid and 35 grams of our sodium hydroxide, then whatever the values of water and sodium chloride are, the X and the Y must be equal to the 25 and the 35, which in this case is 60. So I may not always be aware, particularly if I have two substances that are already in aqueous solution, I don't know how much water is being produced, but what I could do is to evaporate all of the water, assuming that I have a complete reaction, uh, recover the sodium chloride salt, weigh that, and then I would be able to get this value and work backwards uh, to this one. One other quick thing that we probably should just mention in passing um, is that there is a difference between open systems and closed systems. In very rare cases, you can have isolated systems which do not allow either energy or matter to be exchanged um, between the system and the outside environment. Um, those are rare. That usually is something that might involve a calorimetry where we're trying to um, tr keep all of the energy inside the system so we can note any changes. 
but more often systems are closed or open. In a closed system, energy can escape or be transferred um, to or from the surroundings, but the matter remains inside. So these are very good systems to use to determine the conservation of mass law. Unfortunately, other systems such as the one uh, to the right where bubbles are being produced here um, is an open system. So some of these bubbles, especially if they pop, are going to release gases out into the atmosphere. They're going to leave the system. This is something that's very important because mass uh, will not always be conserved in an open system, particularly if it involves gases because the gases often can escape from the system and therefore we find that the mass of the system at the end is less than what it was at the beginning. So keep in mind this idea of open and closed systems when you're analysing the law of conservation of mass. Thanks for watching.